Okay, we're back again, and this is going to be the start of the discussion of the system editor. Now, there are three modes to the operation of this system. There's the run mode, which we're looking at now, and then there's the stop mode, and then there's the edit mode. And to enter the edit mode, you normally enter the edit from the stop menu. And to enter edit, you press the tab key, which is located right above the caps lock key on your computer keyboard. So when we enter the editor, we're first presented with a menu of the editing uh, areas of the system. Now you'll notice up here in the left hand corner these are called <coughs> the system elements. There's keyboards, there's ranks, there's units, there's stops, there's links, there's functions, there's controls, indicators, pistons, pizzicato timings, reiterate timings, channels, channel inputs, channel outputs, function references, special functions. These are all the different elements that make up your definition file. The letters that are in the parenthesis on these elements here are the shortcut commands. So instead of entering KBD to get into the keyboards, you can just simply enter K and that will take you to the keyboards. Now the way things are organized in the system is first by lists and secondly by element numbers. For example, if we type KBD and we use the forward slash whenever we're entering uh, edit uh, commands in the system forward slash K B D or forward slash K if I can type right K followed by the enter key will present us with a list of keyboards now in this particular uh, definition file there's only one keyboard defined and that's the great keyboard and it's identified here by KBD number one and then its name is the great. So if we want to go further and we want to look at the actual keyboard itself, how it is programmed and how it is set up, we type forward slash K or K B D followed by its element number, number one. Now there doesn't have to be any spaces between this. You can just type slash K B D one or you can type slash K followed by the element number one and press the enter key. Now the name has nothing to do with any of the stuff we're going to uh, uh, be talking about. Everything is identified by its three letter element designation or by its shortcut. Names have nothing to do with anything when you're in the editor. So if you want to look at the great keyboard you wouldn't type G-R-E-A-T you would type KBD1, KBD1, enter. That brings up the programming screen for the keyboard. Now, here it asks you for the name. This is where the name is assigned. It has nothing to do because the designation or the, the actual programming element we're working with is keyboard number one. And we can change this name to anything we want. We, we enter the uh, different fields of the editor by using the up, down, left, and right arrows uh, on your computer keyboard. So pressing the down arrow once will highlight the keyboard name. Now we can call that uh, uh, Tom if we want. Okay, we can change the name to Tom. And then if we go back to the uh, menu, okay, and then we type KBD, then now it's called Tom. It isn't the great keyboard anymore, it's the Tom keyboard. So, like I say, the name has nothing to do with it, but notice that the keyboard element number still remains the same. So everything is done by elements and designations. So just keep that in mind. So we'll go back to keyboard one, and we'll change that name from Tom to great. Okay. Now if we come down here to keyboard display. Now this is where... Uh, you can have this keyboard appear on the real-time keyboard display. So if we go back to the uh, um, stop menu and we bring up the, uh, uh, the keyboard display, which is watch the keys, then each one of these keyboard has a number. 
Okay, this is the pedal board, which is number one. This is the lower manual, which is number three. The middle manual, manual two, which is five. The third manual, which is seven. And the fourth manual, which is nine. So odd numbers show first touch. Even numbers show second touch. So we have second touch for the pedal board would be uh, keyboard display number two, four, six, eight, and ten. If you had all four manuals of your keyboard with second touch, then you would use ten uh, total keyboard displays. So if we close here and then go back to the editor, back to keyboard one, and we type in the number one, okay, and we push the enter key, then that becomes the pedal. If we type in number three, then that becomes manual one. Type in five, that's manual two, seven, so on and so forth, okay? So this is actually the great would be manual two. So we would uh, uh, type in five, and so that would show up as manual two. Now to test this, we can simply go back into the stop mode, then type run, and that will assemble this change, okay? And then we type, watch the keys, okay? And now, if we play any note on the keyboard, it will show up on the real keyboard display. Okay, very simple. Now, type stop again. Back to the editor. So, manual 2. Now, if we change this to uh, manual 3, which would be 7. Okay, and then we went back here, and we typed run. And then we went over to keyboard display. And we push the keys. See, now they're on the next manual. So that's how you set up keyboard displays in the system. If you want to watch your keys play back when, the, uh, when you play back a recording, or if you want to watch this in real time as recordings are being made, uh, the keyboard display is, is rather fascinating to watch. So we'll get out of here, and we'll type stop, and go back to the editor. And then we want to make that manual, too. Now the next line down is the debounce time, and uh, uh, debounce is something you want to stay away from unless you have really, really bad contacts. And uh, uh, where you will find the most problem with bad contacts is when you're playing MIDI, because MIDI is instantaneous. Uh, the response time of MIDI uh, will, is, is very, very fast. And so if you have uh, lousy key contacts on your keyboards, then you will notice that if you're playing a piano, it will appear more like a banjo than a piano because every time you're pushing notes and you got those contacts that have a lot of noise in them, then you're going to get a brum, brum, brum. Every time you play uh, a note, which is supposed to be a solid, it's going to be bouncing all over the place. So you can put a debounce time, but be warned that if you do enter debounce times, that uh, this will slow the system down considerably because it's going to wait for this debounce time uh, for the turning on and turning off of keys. And so my recommendation is that you put no more than five milliseconds uh, on the keys, ten at the most. Uh, anything longer than that, you're going to slow the relay down to where it's going to be noticeably slow. And also be warned that whenever you press a key, that it's going to stay on for the full timing of the debounce time that you uh, specify. So if you are just plucking a note, it's going to stay on for five milliseconds, which is really not very long. But if you were to go in here and uh, and put in uh, a value of 100, then now your your system is going to be extremely sluggish, and because every note is going to hold on for at least 100 milliseconds, which is quite noticeable. So if you have to use debounce time, uh, use it as uh, little as possible, uh, remembering that it will slow the system down and the uh, best way to overcome that is to uh, is to clean your contacts or replace them. Now if you do enter a time, like I just had that hundred milliseconds in there and I wanted to get rid of it, you use the delete button and that will delete the uh, uh, any address that you put in the field. Uh, now if you come down here into the uh, input board wiring address field, you use the down arrow to bring it into the C of the 32 foot range and use the right arrow to advance the cursor over to the 8-foot range of the keyboard. Now, it's nicely indicated here that the 8-foot range of your keyboard is these uh, five octaves, and then the 61st note would be up here. So 
uh, you could have. Now this keyboard here is not wired correctly. It only has uh, uh, 50 notes. So um, if you wanted to wire this, notice that it is wired in correct ascending order according to the input boards. And the easiest way to do that, if your keyboards are wired in order and ascending, is to type in the starting address AA, A1, followed by a left parenthesis, the number of consecutive notes that is wired in order for, 61, and a right parenthesis. And now when you press the enter key, what it's going to do is automatically going to wire all those input addresses in one swoop so you don't have to manually enter those addresses all at one time. Now if we uh, uh, clear all the inputs there, we can clear everything except for the name, bring the arrow or the cursor down to here and that was going to be uh, uh, manual 2, no debounce time and we came over here and your input address happened to be uh, AB a1 for 61 notes. So you would type in the starting address where the cursor is located, ABA1, followed by left parenthesis, the number of notes in ascending order that they are wired consecutively for, followed by the end parenthesis, and press the enter key, and then all 61 wiring addresses are installed for you. Now, if we go back to the menu again, the next thing that you can look at is ranks. So if we type slash RNK, and that will show us our one violin rank that's in this definition file. Go back to the menu, and you can return to the menu at any time by typing forward slash MENU. And then if we want to go look at the units, which is the third one down, type UNT, and that'll show us the unit list. And there are 10 units defined. If you want to look at an individual unit, you would type the forward slash, the, uh, uh, the identifier, uh, UNT or unit, followed by the element number that you wish to look at, unit number one, for example. And that will take us to the definition of unit number one, which was trem number one, uh, and then the unit type, and then the location, and then the output address is BCD1. Now we'll go through all of this stuff. Uh, this editing tutorial is going to be very lengthy, and uh, there's going to be a lot of different uh, segments to the uh, tutorial. So all of this stuff will be covered in due time. We're just kind of at this point going through lists. So if we want to go back to the menu again, we type slash menu return. Stops is going to be your longest list in the organ. Links are going to be very long, and functions will probably be the longest list in the organ. In fact, what we will do is we will go and we'll bring up a definition file that already exists. And uh, just for the heck of it, we'll take uh, Alabama. And so we've loaded the Alabama definition file. And now if we go into keyboards, you notice we have them all defined. There's keyboard one, pedal, accompaniment, great, bombard, so on and so forth. We type rank, RNK, and then we have these ranks that are already assigned. Back to the menu, and then units. And like I say, just the designation by itself, the three letter designation, will always show you the complete list of all the elements that are wired or that are programmed under the unit category. And in this case, there's one, two, three, four, five. And if we use the right scroll bar, we can come down to see that there are a total of 140 units defined in this in this particular definition file. Now a unit primarily means uh, a single output like uh, auto horn, uh, vibraphone, motor, trombone, trem, trems, uh, so on, gongs, rolls, chimes, snare drums, all of those are particular units because they're non-pitched and they usually turn on with the uh, uh, with a stop, or in this case, you know, all your swell sh all your swell shades are considered units as well. So if we go back to our menu, and uh, then we bring up the stop list, STP. This will show the entire list of stops, and go over to our scroll bar. If the uh, uh, number of elements uh, exceeds the page limit, okay. In this case, we have 31 on a page and we can use a scroll bar to come down and that will take us all the way through to the very end 
of the uh, of the list. Okay, in this case we have stop three hundred and seventy eight or three hundred actually three hundred and eighty is the total stop uh, list of this particular organ. And here you can go through and if you were to run the console scan like we showed you in the uh, in the last tutorial uh, and you were to turn on these things this is where you would find the information if you beeped in an address uh, and it showed up as uh, stop number 234 and that would be the uh, solo sleigh bells then you could come into the editor and you could go right to the editor without having to look through this long list to see you know what the thing you wanted to change was so if we start from here and went to S234 then uh, I think that's what it was but it doesn't really matter uh, then it would bring up the four foot solo main tibia okay that would bring up the stop uh, and uh, so by using the console scan uh, to identify where things are uh, in the system you can easily go to the different uh, uh, elements of the system very quickly by using console scan to identify things first rather than having to go through and search all the lists go back to our menu again and we come up to links. Now, links will be generally the same as stops, uh, and links will be explained uh, a little bit later. But you'll notice that most of the time your link list will be very similar to your stop list. It may not be quite as long, or it may be, in fact, much longer, depending on how your organ was set up. Now, in this case, we have 399 links, and I think we have 380 stops. So if we go back to STP, and then get to the end yeah we had 380 and then we go to links it helps if you can spell right LNK and then we go to the end of the links and there's 410 links so there's more links in this particular definition than there are stops and we'll explain why uh, in a uh, another um, AVI video back to our menu And by the way, if you ever get uh, caught with the uh, uh, relay command um, box on the window and you just want to get rid of it, you press the escape key and that will remove it from the screen. Uh, next is the function list, FNC. And the functions are basically where the entire relay is built from. Uh, there are quite a list of different functions and this is where things are generally created other than keyboard and rank lists uh, and keyboard and rank programming elements uh, the functions is where everything really happens in the system and there are some uh, 45 or so functions and we will go through all of them uh, and uh, basically show you how to build an organ relay so the function list in this organ is rather long there's 604 defined functions in this organ and you can uh, navigate quickly through the uh, different screens by using either the page up which will take you one page at a time up or a page down which will take you down the list you can use the home key which will take you to the top of the list and you can use the end key to take you to the very bottom of the list next is our controls CTL okay this is where console controls are assigned and these are primarily for working uh, the combination action record play system of the uh, relay from buttons that are assigned at the console for uh, combination action memories and this has subsequently been replaced pretty much by the touchscreen uh, of the system and uh, and the touchscreen panels which we briefly covered in the run screen definition uh, AVI uh, and uh, but this was way back from the early days before touchscreens were available when we had to assign buttons to control combination file loading and record play uh, operation from the console so controls aren't used very much however some people prefer to have some buttons that will load uh, files from the console and allow you to record and play from a couple of start and stop buttons uh, at the console. 
uh, indicators is the uh, complement to controls. Um, and this is where two digit displays can be uh, added to the organ for indicating what combination file and what recording files are, are in use. And uh, if you don't want to go to the expense of putting a touch screen, then these uh, provide very handy uh, ways of accessing and knowing what files are loaded in the system. Next list is our piston list. And here again, our pistons are identified by their designation PST, followed by an element number. So if we want to look at general piston 4, we type PST 14. Okay, and this is where the piston name is assigned, and this is where the input address is assigned. And if we need to, if we have really crummy um, pistons, we can assign debounce times. Now this is not as critical as keyboard debounce times. Uh, you can uh, generally put in 90 milliseconds here and this will give you a good clean pulse uh, when firing combination actions uh, from the pistons. Next thing is our pizzicato list. And in this organ definition there are uh, five uh, pizzicatos. And if we want to look at the individual one by itself, we type PIZ1. And this is the name, solo to accompaniment pizzicato timing block. And this is where the timings are entered for the pizzicato, starting at low C of the keyboard, starting at 80 milliseconds, and then slowly uh, getting faster and faster and faster uh, as it goes up. Now there's, there's two different timing areas. There's 80 milliseconds. Everything else from octave 2 up to top C is at 60 milliseconds. And if we are in an element uh, and we want to quickly go to the next one, we can use the page down because we're already in pizzicato timing block number 1. And if we use the page down, we can go to pizzicato timing block number 2. Page down will take us to 3, 4. Page up will take us back. So you can see that each one of the pizzicato timing blocks can be different. They don't have to be the same. Timing can vary. It just depends on, uh, on what is, uh, uh, is being used for. Reiterate, timing blocks is next. And they aren't really identified. They're just, uh, they're not named in this definition file. Uh, and uh, the, apparently there is nothing defined. So there's no reiterate on this particular organ definition file. Uh, channels is next, CHN. Channels have to do with swells and crescendo. And this will be covered in depth uh, as we get to that. Um, but every uh, expression input in the system it has to be coupled to a channel, and that channel then serves as a junction block between the inputs and the outputs of the uh, expression and crescendo service. Okay, CIN is the next one. These are channel inputs. Now, in this particular organ, everything is discrete switches and potentiometers. Okay, they covered their, themselves both ways. And you can do the same in your organ, and uh, but obviously, uh, individual contacts um, takes a lot of inputs, and potentiometers can basically uh, take things uh, and make uh, very small definitions. And once again, we'll go through all this when we get to it. We're not going to spend a lot of time um, going through a lot of these things now. And uh, channel outputs is where shades and expression and um, crescendo are often defined. And that is a long list as well because it has to have channel output for all the different shades uh, for all the different shoes. So there is a total of 56 channel outputs just to handle the swell shades on this particular definition file. And then down here is a hard programmed crescendo list. And you can either do a hard programmed crescendo like this, or you can have a settable crescendo from the stop keys. 
So we'll cover that as well. But there are two different modes of, uh, of crescendo setup in the system. Uh, function references are really never used. This was a carryover from the old Devtronic system. And uh, so uh, presently, uh, your definition file would not have any function references in it. And I don't believe this one does either. So if we type uh, slash ref, there are none defined. If you come up with a blank screen like this under function references, then you see nothing. That means that nothing is defined. SPF is our last item, and that means special functions. And this is kind of a catch-all for things that are not uh, easily uh, put anywhere else. Uh, and that means the set piston, the range piston, and some of the different controls. These are some carryovers from the old Devtronics days that aren't used much anymore. Uh, magnet pulse time can be set here, which is how long your combination action magnets will pulse for. Uh, panel up down speed has to do with uh, a, uh, a CTL, a control in IND indicators. And here is where if you have a two console system, you can have the slave set piston and a slave range piston so that you can set up um, separate combination and range files between the two consoles. So back to our menu. That's kind of a guided tour of the editor and the different elements and how to access an element, which is a keyboard, a rank, a unit, a stop, and by their element numbers, which is keyboard 1, keyboard 4, rank number 5, unit number 24, so on and so forth. So next we'll go into some of the, uh, uh, the ways to easily show you how to program a definition file.